Hi everybody and welcome along to, oh I'm not sure what it is, is it part five of the uh, French fant fantasy, <laughs> it's a fantasy, <laughs> the whole thing's a fantasy, no, pr part five of the French fancy folio, there we are, got there in the end, no big deal, and this is what we've got so far, we've got the actual folio itself um, and I'm still well I'm not any longer I don't think in two minds I think I am going to shorten this um, that, that's for another day it's not affecting what we're doing today uh, and then we've got our back pocket we need a little collage or something on there but nothing major and at the moment we're working on this section the middle back section so over the weekend we made our pocket and our collage to go on it so that's looking all very well it's all sewn round and looking mighty nice and we made this lovely paper um just from napkins and music paper really and layers and layers and that's a flip flip uh, I did put uh, washi tape down that leading edge because it had suffered somewhere along the line. So that fits into there like that. And then the whole thing does fit in nice and square. The whole thing gets glued down to there and then you can flip and flap to your heart's content. Um, but we can't stick that in yet because we need the two... Two more flips. We're on flipping mad. Um, that one I have completed and that's going to go there. And that means then that because we've got these on here, we don't need magnets or we don't need to fasten that down in any way. It'll just stay there once it's got these uh, two flips on it. So I've done one um, just to make sure I knew, knew how to do it. And we're going to do the other one now so you know how to do it and then we can stick the whole thing down onto the back so let's have a go let's put this to one side we don't need that for the time being so this is the flip that we're working on and i'm just going to bring this one over so i don't make two identical uh, so that's like that now all i have done is uh, put a line up the center that way and a line along there at the height I wanted. These are elements from the kit uh, which are printed out twice and they are going to be centered using those lines that we've already uh, drawn so that makes it just easier to center up. So let's stick that down is the next thing to do. I'm just going to use Aileen's it's just paper to paper it's nothing construction So I hope you're all well and I hope you're all warm up here in the woolly north of England. It's very snowy. It snowed off and on all night and it's snowed pretty much all day. Um, I did feed the birds but then the snow came and covered up what I'd, what I'd left for them. I think by that stage you've pretty much eaten it all actually. Um, there's some blackbirds and uh, starlings and stuff, and they don't leave much behind. Right, so we've got that on. And now I need to put the little button on. Now, I've already cut this out, but I'll show you what I did. I got carried away. That's why I cut two eggs. I just used, uh, not that, this which is craft card. It's not craft paper, it's craft card, so it's fairly thick. And you can see I just cut them out with my inch um, punch. If you haven't got an inch punch, you've got an inch and a quarter punch or an inch and a half or whatever, that's fine. It'll be fine. It's just I've only either got this one, which is an inch, or this one, which is, I don't know, I'm guessing two inches. It's pretty big. So that was, that was my choice, so I went for the inch. And there are two of those there. I cut four out in total. 
two have gone onto this one and two I've just stuck together like that and marked the center. I have inked around it with vintage photo. It's not much point inking this with duck egg blue, you know, the speckled egg or whatever it's called. It's uh, it you wouldn't see anything. So I've done it with vintage photo and I've also marked the center of this. So what happens now is you get your pokey tool and you put that through it quite a, quite a way up because you're going to put a brad in there and brads are always bigger than you think they are. And the same here on this point that I've marked. Let me get my yoga mat out. So through that as well, quite high up because this is tapered. It's thicker at this end and the point, obviously. So my yoga mat, look at it. It's the right state. Still does the job though. So inky side up, get your brad. Feed it through there, feed it through there, that is not in the center. Can I live with it? I don't think I can. I just don't think I can. I need to move it across a bit. So now I've got a the hole that's too big really but it doesn't matter it'll be all right yeah that's that's central now happy now yes so splay the split pin of your brad out and you don't need to hammer this because actually we need a bit of room underneath it because it's going to be one of those tie things with string that winds around so um we need to make sure that we have left enough room for the string to wind around so that's grand that's lovely now i've taken just some this is craft paper so um this stuff is craft paper uh, and i'm just going to punch an inch out with that as well just to go over the the back of the the legs of the brad otherwise things catch on it and it it just becomes a real nuisance I'm wondering actually if a two inch one would be better I'll give, I'll give that a try. I, I think that would be better actually because the inch one doesn't want to stick because it's so near to the ends of the brad. So yeah, I'm going to use that. That's what I'm going to do. Um, so no holes or anything in this. This is just simply to mask the legs of the um, brad. It doesn't even have to be centered or anything, just stuck on there. Job. I don't know why Aileen's doesn't seem to want to stick. Let's shove a bit more in there and see. Let's see what's wrong with it. I do know that craft paper does absorb glue, so maybe that's um, part of the trouble. If you don't want to stick, I'm going to get the Cosmic Shimmer out, I warn you now. I think that's, I think that's stuck, I've got a bit of a wrinkle here. Let's move that out push it down for all it's worth. As I say, it's not a construction piece, but I would like it to stick. There we are. Okay, that was much more of a drama than I was anticipating. So that's pretty much that done. We're, we're the same there. So let's move over to the inside. So that this is going on the top, so it'll 
flip open and then you'll have this uh, little envelope, little collage then, a little bow. Uh, and we'll, we'll do the same on this, on the bottom. Uh, or we'll try and do the same. But I want it actually the same. Because when you flip that up, this is going to be the top. But when you flip this down, this is going to be the top. You know, you don't want to be ferreting around here because that's that's not the top. So let's make our little envelope first. And I made it uh, out of paper I'd printed, tw um, you know, two sides of. Uh, one is the French fancy kit. The other is Lorna's French blue... Um, French blue papers, I think they might be called. But you'll see it. I think she's got two sets of them, actually. So let's take the measurements off the first one. So my first fold is at three inches. So let's get the scoreboard out. It would be much easier, I think. So the first fold... The, the, the measurement is actually a piece of A4 cut in half. So it's four and a quarter. Uh, four and one eighth actually, because uh, with the measurement of A4. So measure your own bit and see how wide you need it. So the first one is at three inches. So that's there. Next one is three and three quarters from that. So that's, I reckon that's six and three quarters. And then the flap comes down <gasps> one and seven eighths. Who invented that? So that's six and three quarters, seven and three quarters. And what did I say? Seven eighths. So eight and three quarters minus an eighth. So that's there. I don't know how I ended up with that silly measurement. And that's where we're cutting it off. So hopefully that should be right. Let's try folding it first before we do anything rash like cutting it off. You could use either of these sides of the paper. They're both absolutely beautiful. Right, so that's the, the envelope, if you like. Then this folds here. And really make sure that you get it square because scoreboards are not the most accurate things you can be you can be quite a way out on the scoreboard i'm not talking quarter of an inch or anything but enough to make it look not right so let's fold this one in as well and that's where we're going to cut it let's get that really straight too there we are so we're going to cut that off there so let's get my little ruler and my rotary cutter. Okay, so there we are. So far, I think so good. So that's going to fold up like that. That's going to come down like that. Yeah, looks straight, looks okay. Um, the next thing I did was round the corners of the top flat part. That's the only rounding I did. You can round more if you want to. Um, and then I inked all around it. Ah, before I inked, I cut a little notch in there. And I used my two inch one because I didn't want it to be two. And I did actually measure it <laughs> so from 20 to 30 and a half so that's uh, 25 and a little bit so let's just make a mark there so I know where half is so it's about there lovely right so now I can ink around there around the whole thing and it is this speckled egg which it doesn't show up dramatically, um, but I'm using the oxide and it's a bit more opaque than the ink, so you can see it a little bit. 
and it does finish off those sort of white edges of the paper which are the junk journalist's scourge now this is going to be a gusseted envelope and you might recall if you followed the uh, 31 days of January dailies that on day three we did a gusseted journal a gusseted journal gusseted envelope um, in Mr Green so it's going to be following that same method worked in Mr Green so hopefully it's going to work for us here there we are right I'm, all, I'm all inked so I need a piece of um, paper that's two inches wide so let's um, see what I've got how wide are you that's got to be more than two inches hasn't it it's double sided perfect so let's cut that off at two inches And you need the two inches fairly exactly because this is a bit that's going to make your uh, gusset. Keep all your little bits because they do come in handy with collage and stuff. Um, right, now the length that I want this cut at is from here, from the top edge to, I don't know, a centimetre away from the bottom so that's going to measure on mine um, it's about two and a half inches just two and five eighths maybe something like that so I'm going to cut two of those one for each side at two and five eighths the other side oh, didn't mean to do that just dug into my ruler two and five eighths right so finally I have got two pieces that are two and five eighths right so the thing to do now is score these so they need to be scored on half an inch one inch and one and a half inches both of them so we'll score them with the scoreboard but we will check them as we go so tight into both corners half an inch one inch one and a half and then turn it over and do the same thing half an inch, one inch, one and a half and doing it both ways will help because we're going to make sort of peaks and troughs and fold it over and same thing half an inch, one inch and one and a half and then we're going to fold them so fold the first one over like that and make sure it's straight so that's straight there so crease that in and then the next one goes back on itself like that and once again make sure that you've got that edge at the edge that it's all straight The edges meet. And sometimes you have to just a, a little bit of jiggery pokery. And then the next one, the last one, folds back over all of those. So you end up with a little accordion pleat like that. Yeah. 
<laughs> I seem to recall doing that when we did the one on Mr. Green as well. Oh dear, I haven't grown up any then. Back on itself, up to that last line there. And then the last one over on itself. Again, being, trying to be as accurate as you can. So there we are, we've got our two little gussets there. Okay, so let's take the envelope and let me just check which way this goes. Right, so we need to stick it that way. Yeah, the, the two outside, when you put it like that, it's these two bits that you stick down. So I'm going to put glue on just one side of that. You can use double sided if you want to. It's, uh, it'll give you more instant grab. My glue doesn't want to come out. I'm not surprised. I've been using a a pin that's not stainless. There you go. Thank you. Right. So that goes into the journal. In well, into the envelope. So let's get that right at the top and down that edge as accurately as you can. Yeah, that's lovely. Give it a good push down. And same on the other one. So the, the free bit, if you like, faces in to the envelope. It goes just down that side and push it down. Okay, so the next thing we do is put glue on the, what's now the top edge of it. Top face of it, should I say, more than edge. Getting a bit weird with this glue. And the one on the other side, just the same. Like I say, you might find using double sided easier uh, and less sort of messy. And then you're just going to take this, hold those down in the middle and fold it over and fold it as accurately as you can, like so. I'm just going to put a peg on those just for a couple of minutes. Just so it grips. Lovely. So that's uh, pretty much that envelope done really. The only other thing that I've done is I've put just a little um, collage I suppose down there um, and so we'll do the same thing with this one. Just get the pin back in my glue. Um, so I used a piece of music paper, uh, not that size obviously, <laughs> uh, a piece of Lorna's script, um, a piece of this fabric and a butterfly and that that's it that's all that I used um, this is a butterfly out of the kit so that's gonna go nicely with the kit so let's just get this cut down to size it doesn't have to be exactly that I'm just gonna go to the end of the script I've got my decal edge scissors you can use your decal edge ruler you can cut it straight really up to you what you fancy doing you might not want anything on it 
and that's fine also. So I just need to go across here because that's a straight edge at the minute. As is that one. Right, so that's the script. And then we need a bit of music, which I'll just tear. It's not much. There we go. So let's take these off now. I'm sure it's fine. I won't put it to the test yet, but it does seem to be sticking, which is great. That's all I want. So that's going to go there. That's going to go there. We need a little bit of fabric there and the butterfly. Yeah, I've got everything. So I'm just going to ink around this um, music. behind there so the music's the first one that goes on so uh, let's just do that with the glue stick it's so much easier and less messy and there's no drying time so always up it's a good choice I really need to get some more glue sticks I'm so nearly out So that goes there. And then this one. I haven't inked around this because, quite frankly, you can't see it. It's the, the paper is darker than the ink. That goes along there. And then um the other piece of fabric on with double sided actually because it's very open weave and I thought that you would see um, you'd see the glue and it wouldn't look nice so I'm just going to snip down a little way and hopefully I can tear that off yeah sort of lovely got some threads there from a thread pile So I'm just going to put a little bit of double-sided along the back there. Burnish that on. You don't burnish it on you can't get the back off that's the thing so you need to burnish it and there we go and it's just going to go there like that now the butterfly I actually well I inked around him first so let's do that first and then I stuck him on with dimensional tape because it, it looks a bit flat like that. So let me get my dimensional tape and my dimensional little square things. I might need them, I don't know. So just need a little bit, kind of like that. Let's try that bit first. Yeah. It's looking good so I'll just cut that off there that hopefully hopefully will fit the other side oh no oh well might like that yeah that's good I don't need any more is it showing on the right side no nope. jobs are good so just peel those off and I always put a bit of glue on them as well um, I'm sure that this stuff is Sizzix, so I'm quite sure that it would hold up. 
but just on the off chance I just put a bit of glue on a bit of cosmic shimmer it's not cheap this cosmic shimmer I was just thinking about halfway through this bottle and I thought oh go and order some more blimey glues are expensive aren't they right so let's just pop that on there like that and I just want a little gem that's just lifted him it's just raised him up a little bit give it a bit of dimension which I quite like and I'm going to put a little uh, crystal in his, on his body bling him up a little bit this one that's it one day I'll have to show you the um, the hot the hot fix crystal tool. Uh, I think I, I think some of you will have seen it, but I don't think all of you have. And it's great because you can do loads in a very short space of time. So just my E6000. Turn that over there that way. A little dab of it in the center. Like that, that's adequate. And just pick that up and pop it down there. Lovely. Now, as I keep telling you, E6000 is not an immediate grab glue. See, I've got time to move it around, um, but don't mess with it if, if you don't need to, because it will take a little minute to dry. Right. Let's see, that looks all right, that gusset. This gusset looks like it's got stuck, that's it. It's just a little bit of glue there. So there we have it. Look at that. A gusseted envelope. Brings me such joy and I've no idea why. Uh, right, now then, what I will say is with this one, um, I put the little Velcro dot there and there. But that was a bit, that was wrong. Um, because I still had the bulk on that centre bit from this brad what i should have done is put one either side of it because that's just making more bulk than is necessary so for this one i'm going to put two uh, velcro dots oh it's snowing like billy white so um if i can get into my drawer i will phew that drawer did not want to yield so, um, yeah, let's put these down first. Let's put them in the corners. These are the furry side. I'm not sure which way is the perceived wisdom I'm putting your Velcro on, but they're equal. Now I need two of the rough side ones. And what I generally do to make sure they're right is I stick that over the other one. And these are self-adhesive. So uh, I then close it up where I want it to go, push down quite firmly and hopefully they'll stick where I want them to stick. If not, I'll have to use a bit of glue. Yeah, that's fine. That's great. Lovely. So that's going to stay shut like that. And I just want a little bow just uh, on the top, just for prettiness. Here it is. I got it earlier. Um, so I'm sure there's a right and a wrong side to this. I think that's the wrong side. I think that's the right side. Okay. And I'm going to use E6000 for that. In fact, I'll leave that until I've glued the whole thing on because otherwise I might disturb it and it might end up sticking where I don't want it to. So I want this one this way up, which is the opposite way sort of thing. Well, it's the same way, but the opposite. You get it. I'm sure you get it. So that wants to go fairly close into that fold, not in the fold, an eighth of an inch out of it. 
and that's it there so I'm going to double side this because there might be a bit of pressure on it if you're opening the pocket and putting things in and out so I'm going to put my double sided on the back give it a bit of extra sticking power I'm going to put glue over this as well. <gasps> Belt and braces. That way then I feel fairly secure that it's going nowhere, which is what we want. Just going to put a couple of bits up the middle. Lovely. Right, so let's burnish those down. You don't have to do this part in your folio. You could very easily just cover it with some of the design paper from the kit and it would look really pretty. So, um, you know, don't feel that you have to do this part. It's just, you know, as you know, I like making things complicated. Just going to have a final check before I fix it that I have got it the right way. That Get rid of those. And right, final check. So that's flipping up, so it's looking that way. That's flipping down, so I want it the top to, to the fold. Okay, right, let's put some glue on there and get that stuck in. up to the fold and equidistant from the two sides. That looks about good to me I would say. Just there. So there we are. So I'm just going to open my velcro up and give this a really good push down. Bits of glue trying to escape, that's fine. as well. So there we are, I think that's pretty firmly attached now. Quite happy with that. Let's put our bow on and I think the jobs are good. Which way is right? Come on. Um, I think that's the wrong side. I could be wrong. So there's a bit of uh, E6000 on there. Let's just pop that onto the centre here. And that's not going to stick straight away. Um, so I'm going to uh, put a little clip in it where I want it to be for a little while just to dry it in the in the right position. That's it. 
so uh, that's it for today guys we've got our two flips done uh, and they're going to go either side of this part and then it's going to get stuck in the in the in the folio so join me again for part six of this scintillating french fancy folio thanks for joining me today and i'll see you soon bye